We'll speak to our correspondent there, Rawad Taha. We'll talk about um, Hassan Nasrallah in a moment, the leader of Hezbollah. Just give us a sense of what's going on on the border. We've seen some of the footage of the fires in the big Israeli city. Is it right to say it's an escalation, but not yet a second front in the conflict? Uh, on the eve of, uh, of that speech that we're expecting in a couple of hours, Hezbollah attacked uh, 19 Israeli military sites. Uh, located along the border with uh, Lebanon. Uh, we're located, uh, we're talking about a border that spans over 120 kilometers. So 19 sites were attacked uh, at different uh, places, starting from uh, the Mediterranean to the west up until uh, reaching the border with the Golan Heights uh, uh, and Syria towards the east. So, yes, massive escalation. Uh, besides that, Hezbollah has only claimed responsibility for. Uh, those specific uh, 19 uh, attacks, uh, while one of the attacks, it was important that Hezbollah mentioned its use of uh, suicidal drones for uh, the first time since the beginning of uh, the conflict. That is a new tactic that they used yesterday in one of those attacks. Uh, moreover, as for the rockets uh, that hit Kiryat Shmona, uh, they were adopted by a different, uh, by a different militia. Uh, given the fact that Lebanon is hosting a number of militias, be it uh, uh, the Palestinian Jihad, also also Hamas is active in the country. So uh, we have a number of different actors who are also flaring up the border uh, with northern Israel. That's a really interesting point, actually. I may just bring on to the second point. Let's talk about Hassan Nasrallah, the significance of this speech today as you see it, how much influence that he has, what he might say. Well, this is his first speech uh, since the beginning of the conflict. So we're talking about three weeks with uh, no televised speech for Nasrallah. That is not uh, very uh, common. We've only seen a couple of other uh, instances where he was absent for uh, such a long period of time, especially at a time when uh, the country is, uh, is boiling. Uh, just only a month or so backwards uh, uh, during the Shia uh, ceremonies of Ashura. Nasrallah gave a speech almost every other day. So him being absent for almost 30 days during uh, such a conflict is uh, is very uh, mysterious. People uh, across the country are are waiting and anticipating what's uh, what's the speech going to be like. A number of schools across different regions have already uh, cancelled classes for the afternoon and called on parents to pick up their students as early as uh, as noontime. So yes, everyone is waiting to see what's uh, what's going to happen and what's the content of that speech, whether it's uh, heading towards further more escalation or uh, possibly a de-escalation or just maintaining the current status quo of these day-to-day uh, -day confrontations. Uh, one thing to make a point of uh, is the fact that has Hezbollah has called on its supporters uh, to join uh, and rally in four different locations, uh, two of which are located in southern Lebanon, one in the southern suburb of Beirut, and one in the eastern uh, valley of Bekaa. So uh, uh, the fact that Hezbollah has called on its supporters, despite uh, the ongoing confrontations, uh, to attend such rallies uh, has signaled out to some people that it's not necessarily heading towards an escalation right on the spot, given the fact that they already called for uh, tens of thousands of people to rally and support in public open areas. So it wouldn't make sense militarily to do something right on the spot. For example, like the first operation in the 2006 war when Hezbollah right. launched uh, launched an attack yeah. Yeah. Uh, on an Israeli vessel live, uh, vessel live on TV. Rawad, good to hear from you. Rawad Taha, our correspondent in Beirut.